In previous videos involving my NVIDIA GT710, many had commented about how I have the DDR3 version and that the GDDR5 version was much faster and really was just a better value. So I bought one. In this video, we'll be putting them up against each other to see how much better it is. I'll also overclock each later on uh, just to see how far they can go and what difference it makes. As you can see, the two cards I have are nearly identical spec-wise, except for the RAM. Each have the same core, therefore the same clock speed, number of shading units, and well, everything else. The only difference is the memory. But as you can see, the memory bandwidth with the GDDR5 version is over three times greater. And I'll be running these tests on a simple Dell Optiplex with an i5-6500. No, it's not the newest or fastest thing out there, but I think this is the type of computer you'd probably be running a 710 in anyways. Alright, well, let's get into it. The 710 has limited NVENC support, but it can encode and decode H.264. Encoding with NVENC and Handbrake shows that they're very similar, nearly identical. The GDDR5 version finished only a few seconds sooner, and it had a slightly higher average FPS. So encoding wasn't really affected by the change in RAM. 3D, however, well, yeah, there's a difference. Nearly a 10 FPS improvement in heaven. Now you may notice the temperature of the DDR3 card. Uh, it's not actually 95C. It's been doing this lately. I've seen it read as high as 130C. It's just an issue with the card. As a matter of fact, since this is a small case, each of these cards are fanless. So I placed a small fan over top of the heat sinks for all the tests. It's not pretty, but it's only for the tests. Now, just so you know, from this point on, I'm gonna refer to the cards as the three card or the five card. It's much easier than saying GDDR over and over again. Superposition showed nearly a 6 FPS improvement. And it may only be 6 FPS, but look at how much smoother the scenes render on the, on the 5 card. Unreal Tournament showed nearly a 20 FPS improvement. Also, any tearing you might see in the video is my capture device. Uh, everything decided to act up while I was making this video, so it's just going to have to be there. But yeah, I do need to uh, look into buying a better uh, capture device soon. This, I definitely did not expect. The original Need for Speed Most Wanted never really shows a huge difference between cards or CPUs, at least in my tests. However, I'd say 20 FPS is fairly substantial, especially when you consider it's the same damn GPU, just with better memory. Now, there are still 710s, and there was a bit of input lag in each, but uh, hey, one rendered faster. Fallout New Vegas, a game that came out before this card was even designed, only runs at 18 FPS on the 3 model, but the 5 model, well, it's pretty close to 30 FPS. And you can see how much smoother the uh, rendering is on the 5 card. Now, I didn't actually play Crisis Remastered with either of these. I just ran the benchmark. Now, the benchmark claimed it was only a 4 FPS difference on average, but I gotta say, once again, it looks far smoother on the 5. Crypto, do verify your suit is working under Earth's atmospheric conditions. Get a move on! Here's another with the same difference. Destroy All Humans benched on average only 2 FPS higher, but as before, it's far smoother, and really playing it was night and day. The 3 card had a lot of input lag. The 5 card felt fine. Well, in comparison. I'm sure if I ran a 1080 back to back with these, I'd feel completely differently, but it is what it is. Raft was a bit too much for either. There was only a half an FPS difference on average, and each had loads of input lag and everything you'd expect running a crappy GPU. But hey, it did better technically. Another old game, GTA San Andreas. Even the DDR3710 was able to manage 76 FPS with this game, but the 5 put out nearly double the frame rate. GTA 4, well, it says 14 FPS average, but it felt more like 4 FPS with the input lag. The 5 card was definitely better, but it still lagged really bad. Yeah. 
and GTA 5. As with many comparisons before, runs better and felt better to play than GTA 4, but still not great on a 710. Once I got on the bike and was trying to weave through traffic, there was at least a half a second of input lag on each. The 5 card had a higher frame rate and therefore looked smoother, but it played just as bad as the 3 card. Watching the benchmark run, the frame times were obviously lower for the 5, but they seemed to jump around a bit, more than the 3. However, to me the 5 rendered smoother all around. And of course, Portal 2. Well, both were okay, played fine. But the 5, once again, was up by about 20 FPS. Now overclocking. The 3 cards GPU happily overclocked 100 megahertz more, but the RAM I think was already pushed to its limits as an additional 100 megahertz is all I could really get out of it. The 5 cards GPU maxed out around 300 and the memory I was able to push a bit further. Now this is just basic overclocking. No mods were performed. About the only thing was having a case fan sitting on top of the heatsink in the case. But other than that, it was just install MSI, crank up a few sliders until it crashed and then back them down a bit, done. So let's see how they did. So the three card is up top and the overclocked results are on the right. And well in heaven, the 3 had a 4.5 FPS improvement, while the 5 card was sitting around 8.6. In superposition, the 3 was up 2 FPS, while the 5 was up 4.2. In Destroy All Humans, there were improvements in both, but only slightly. The bottleneck, I think, here is more of the GPU core than its memory. And you can see, with the overclock, the 3 card nearly caught up with the stock 5 card. And the same thing, well, happened in GTA 5. Now, I couldn't test NVENC on the 1030 to compare because the 1030 doesn't have it. Yeah, strange how you can encode with NVENC on a 710, but not a 1030. Now, the 1030 will decode, just not encode. But you can see there really is no difference uh, when encoding with either of these cards, even with them overclocked. Now, for the rest, there's times where the overclock 3 card matched the stock 5 card but the 5 card always pulled ahead of the stock 3 card. I included the 1030 just for a reference. So even though the GDDR5 710 is far better than its older sibling, it's still an extremely low-end card. I used one for years on my Workbench PC. I didn't game on it, but everything else, including YouTube, video capture, uh, 3D modeling software, it all worked fine. So for just an everyday non-gaming PC, the 710 is perfectly fine. It might even be good for someone throwing together a, you know, a low-end PC for playing older games. GTA San Andreas played great on both versions, so I'd imagine Vice City and any other game of that time period and before would just work great. Well, that's all for now. As usual, if you made it this far, thank you, and I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.